Alright, thanks for watching and today we would like to prove the product law for sequences or as I like to call it the Prada law. And in other words, we want to figure out what happens to the limit of the product of two sequences. So suppose Sn is a sequence that converges to S and Tn is a sequence that converges to T then what we want to show is that Sn times Tn converges to St. So you might say it's stupendous, but I say no, it's st stupendous. Not only that, what's nice is, remember, S is the limit of Sn and T is the limit of Tn. In other words, what we want to show is that the limit of S and Tn, so the limit of the product is just the product of the limits. And what's nice about this is that not only is the result very nice, but I also absolutely love the proof. And in fact, let me share it with you. So proof, again, step one is just some scratch work. So what do we want to show? We want to show that this difference is small. So consider S and Tn minus St. And let's apply a clever but very important triangle inequality trick. So take this and subtract and add Sn times T. So minus Snt plus Snt and then minus st, and then we can use a triangle inequality. So this is less than or equal to sn tn minus snt, and then plus snt minus st. And notice what's nice here is that we have a common factor of sn, and here we have a common factor of t, so we can just pull it out. And therefore, this becomes absolute value of Sn times absolute value of Tn minus T plus absolute value of T, absolute value of Sn minus S. Now, what's the idea? We know Sn converges to S, so this is small and this is just a fixed number, but also Tn converges to T, so this is small and this is bounded because we know Sn converges. So if you take the sum of all of this, it actually becomes small. But of course, let's formalize this and execute this correctly. So step two, our actual proof. Our proof. Okay. First of all, because eventually we want to divide by t, let's just assume t is non-zero. If t is zero, you can just do the problem directly, and in fact there's a homework problem on this. So let's just assume t is non-zero. Moreover, as I said, what's nice is this term doesn't blow up to infinity, it's actually bounded, and that's because Sn converges. So since Sn converges, the sequence Sn is bounded, meaning that there's a positive constant, capital M, and positive such that absolute value of Sn is less than or equal to capital M uh, for all n. Look, the only case if m is zero, just let m be one. So just choose a, uh, a constant bigger than it. So that's why we can assume m is positive. And essentially what we want to do, again, we want to use the fact that this thing is small. So now let epsilon be given. So 
So, and then since Tn goes to T, we know that there is uh, N1 such that If n is bigger than n1, then tn minus t, it's less than not only epsilon, but we need this m to cancel out the sn term. And we also need a 2 because we have two terms. So we know this is true. And moreover, And also since Sn goes to S, we know that there is N2 such that if N is bigger than N2, then Sn minus S is less than, so epsilon over 2, because we have two terms, and absolute value of t, because this will cancel out the absolute value of t term from before. And remember, t is non-zero, so this is positive, and also this is a fixed constant, so it's okay to do that. And then, let's just choose the bigger one of n1 and n2, because we want both things to happen. So let n be the maximum, of n1 and n2, then if you're bigger than n, we have, well remember, uh, the whole calculation is still true, so s and t n minus s t, it's less than or equal to, I believe it was s n times t n minus t, plus absolute value of t times sn minus s. But now we know sn is less than or equal to m, so that's less than or equal to m times tn minus t plus absolute value of t, sn minus s. And now you see this just flows like butter, so this becomes strictly less than this thing. strictly less than m times epsilon over 2m plus absolute value of t times epsilon over 2 absolute value of t. And now this cancels out, this cancels out, and we get epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, and this gives us our victorious epsilon. And therefore, what have we shown? We've shown that Sn, Tn uh, goes to St. So limit n goes to infinity of Sn, Tn equals St. All right. Thank you very much.